Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This big boy is the Max Ace Goliath. This is the newest version of this knife. I uh, I didn't realize there were other versions, um, but um, I, uh, <laughs> I've done quite a bit of research on the past of this thing. I am unsure of exactly how Max Ace is getting this done for the price uh, that they're they're offering here. Um, as far as I can tell, this is the exact version being, or one of the versions that's being offered on their website right now. Titanium bolsters. Titanium liner with a steel lock bar insert, G10 scales, and then we have a San Mai SLD Magic Blade, which we're going to talk about a little bit here in a sec. Uh, these are coming in at $130, which uh, is pretty amazing. Max Ace is known for doing things at an excellent price, but wow. The Black Mirror was an example of a knife that was, um, you know, it came in at, a, at an excellent price. It still is. Um, I'll, I'll link as much of this stuff down below as I possibly can. You guys should definitely check out Max Ace Knives in general if you haven't. Thanks so much to Max Ace Knives for sending this in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. And it does help my channel when you use those links down there, but that's up to you. So yeah, there's different versions of this. There was like a G10 version with steel... Well, with titanium bolsters and a steel liner that had K110 steel and it was coming in at like 120. I found that on Blade HQ. That was the 2.0, which is sold out. This is yet a different version. Furthermore, they have another version of this thing that is, it might be carbon fiber for the scales, a Damascus bolster, titanium liners, and S90V on the blade for $228. That's pretty impressive. Uh, I got to say this right off the bat. SLD Magic, I've seen it being used by Katsu, uh, apparently now Max Ace. I don't know what it is. If you look around on the internet, you have people throwing around the same crap that they throw. And maybe it's accurate and maybe it's not. But it's it seems like it's what people do. It's kind of like going with C on a test. When people don't know, someone says... It's like a Super D2, and then that catches fire, and it goes all over the internet. I don't know if that's true, and I honestly don't know if the people who are saying that have any idea if it's true. Maybe. Uh, maybe that's the case. I don't have the appropriate equipment to test the composition of this steel. There are people in the community who have the ability to do that uh, and to test rock wall hardness. Right, love them knives, and then honestly, I—I I mean, I know Laren Thomas is super busy. It's not like he's taking requests to just test random steel, but it would really be really cool to get somebody like Laren Thomas to be able to tell us exactly, you know, how this stuff works. Uh, taking it out and cutting stuff with it, it certainly does not dull quickly. Cutting cardboard and things like that for just a little bit, I don't notice any sort of edge damage or edge, you know, wear that's significant. But then again, that's not really all that significant of a test. And I'm not the type of channel that tests this stuff. Uh, perhaps Cedric Aneda, somebody like that, um, who's got a lot more uh, knowledge and wisdom when it comes to doing things like that. But just using this like a regular pocket knife, the way that I use all of my stuff, it seems fine, right? It certainly it certainly doesn't act like ultra soft uh, M390 where it just doles immediately. So I have to assume it's decently heat treated. On their website, it shows that it's 60 to 62, which we immediately go, oh, it's above 60, so it's fine. The, pro the problem is we don't know what the optimal range is for this stuff, right? Or at least I don't. So I'm I'm letting you guys know this beforehand that I don't have the professional ability to tell you whether or not this is the appropriate price range for this or that it's heat treated appropriately. Katsu will sell folding hatchets made out of SLD magic for over $300. They also have some over $200 fixed blades that are also this sort of San Mai uh, SLD magic. I don't know what it's clad with either, but we can see here there is definitely a core to this stuff. If you look closely, you can see the core and then the cladding or the jacket around the outside. So there you go. Still though, $130 seems like a pretty impressive price tag, right? Especially, I mean, like that's the territory where it's like, oh, it's 154 CM. Okay, that's fine, right? 
Um, so, <laughs> not to put a specific label on certain blade materials, but I was <laughs> I was kind of shocked at the one hundred and thirty dollar price tag. Let's go ahead and measure it because it's freaking huge. Uh, that's the other thing here. It's almost ten inches, nine point eight five inches overall. Blade length is four and a half inches. Cutting edge is four point three five inches. How about some size comparisons to put that into perspective? Up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, holy crap, it's, it's hilariously dwarfed. It's like when the mountain fought that guy, the spinny guy with the dagger, right? Or not with the dagger, he had a spear. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Now it's like that. That's uh, I'm talking about Game of Thrones. Up against the Ontario Rat Model 2, which seems pointless to do a size comparison with. All right, how about up against the Demco AD 20.5? Where are you? There you are. All righty. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Wow, it's huge. And last but not least, the uh, Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bug Out. Okay, how's the action? It's great, partially because this is a Max Ace and also partially because... The blade is not overly thick. There's no double clutch or anything, by the way. The blade's not overly thick. It's just big. It's very smooth. It feels like a high-quality smoothness, not like, a, oh, you know, that's, it's just so big that it doesn't matter. We could have put rocks in there instead of bearings, and it would fall shut. No. It's nice, and disengagement is easy. There's not an enormous amount of lock bar tension. The detent is honestly... It's not a light detent. I think they could have gone heavier. There's plenty of leverage off the flipper tab, and the blade is so big that you're not going to fail it, right? But they probably could have gone a little heavier. As it sits, it's okay. It's just kind of a medium detent where they really needed a medium heavy or a heavy detent on a not, – not functionally just to get that satisfaction, right? But as it sits, it's fine. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Flipping, flipping action is great. I mean, it's that's the only way to deploy it is the flipper tab, and the flipper tab is big enough and angled correctly, uh, so you're gonna it's gonna result in a in a fairly satisfying flip no matter who you are. Let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness up against the Spider Co pair of three, including the liners and the bolsters here and the scales. It's pretty thick, not you know horrendously thick, but it's <laughs> the the theme of bigness is ever present, ever apparent here unnecessary syllables length and height up against the pm2 and pair three it's longer and it is thicker giggity uh so the spider co pair three yeah including the flipper tab it's taller so there you go um let's go ahead and weigh it what is this big old fat boy weigh? it's got to weigh at least seven ounces it does <laughs> 7.5 ounces i think i remember that from the unboxing as way too good of a guess otherwise uh, let's do, yeah, where's my, there it is. Uh, let's do a hardware check. You get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. It's also in the pinned comment. There's already a T8 bit in here. You just have to take my word for it from the last review. I just forgot to put it back. That, I think, is actually going to end up being a T10 because it's a little loosey-goosey in there. We can't have that. Forgive my... Uh, fingernails, they still um, have paint from when my daughter painted them. They were really beautiful. You can check them out on Instagram if you want to see what they looked like. T10 for the pivot. We also have um, probably T8 scale screws. And my guess would be there are – well, you've got one T8 scale screw or, or backspacer screw right here because it goes through. Pocket clip screws are also T8. I would be shocked to find out that the screw that is definitely under here holding in this backspacer, unless they've got it um, floating, which might be the case. If there's another screw under here, it's probably also a T8. In any case, this is a sandwich construction liner lock running on bearings. It is not a difficult knife to take apart and put back together. Just make sure you have the right tools for the job, and you should be good to go. Let's measure the blade stock thickness real quick. I would, I bet that's 150 thousandths. That would be my guess. Maybe it, bless it. Stop. Stupid thing. Uh, yeah, wow. No, it's, it's actually more than that. It's about 100. It says 156,000. So relatively thick blade. Meat and potatoes time. This is a really classic profile, and we have seen it many times. It's just an oversized version of, 
I mean, there, there are a lot, like, there's, there's already going to be people saying it looks like the this, it looks like the that. Yeah. In fact, um, a thousand years before you were born, there was a knife that looked like this, right? This is not like this, like Kubi didn't invent this or Tucson, right? This is not the first time that a knife like this ever existed. These are the, some of the most classic lines that have ever existed. Uh, and there's a reason for that. They work. It's got one lock in point and boy, there's a, you're hanging on to a lot of knife here. And you know, truthfully, it's comfortable, but the edges could have been knocked down just slightly more. This edge right here, this chamfer is kind of hollow. So it comes to a really abrupt ledge, um, but it, it's okay. You just, you got so much to hang on to. It's really not that much of a bother. Neither is the pocket clip because it's milled and flat and rounded at the end, uh, at the end. Um, plenty comfortable. And the jimping extends out, you know, to a reasonable spot. It's a little bit slippery, but you can get a decent amount of traction there. You'll be able to put a lot of uh, power into cuts. And speaking of power into your cut, this has a ridiculous edge. I mean, it is fully flat ground. And while it is 155 thousandths or so, that final cutting edge is aggressive. Uh, and this, I mean, this is after not too much, but cutting through cardboard for a bit, 10, 15 minutes, no problem. Uh, a lot of times when a, when a steel is too soft, you see some decent edge damage in that time. But no, this is, this is okay. Right now, it could be that ten more cuts and this stuff goes to crap. Right? I don't know, but I'm not feeling outside of just maybe. Or just, I'm not. That might just be like cardboard debris still on there. Um, I'm real quick off the table. I'm just going to see if I can get that whatever that stuff is and run my fingernail down it off the blade. Um, it's fine now. Uh, I don't know. It seems like this stuff is, is pretty good to go, but the geometry of this blade is very good. Uh, you will not have an issue, um, cutting through even thicker dense material. There's so much blade here and it's just fully, I mean, this is a really like purposeful knife. There's not, not really a lot of fancy going on here. I do like the little S shape and the bolster. Right, the transition from titanium to G10 is very good. Um, it would have been cool to see the liners nested, but it's fine the way that they are. I will point out that the blade is so big and so heavy and so sharp that it actually is a little bit dangerous with this guy to disengage it with one hand. If that blade comes down on your finger, it will result, best case scenario, in a fairly nasty cut. So just be cognizant of that. Uh, Max Ace did a good job of polishing the pivot collar there. That's nice. It's got an overall, it's got a great front aesthetic. Back here it says Goliath, which we don't need. We know that because we bought it, presumably, right? And then it says SLD Magic. Probably could have just not put Goliath there and just in teeny tiny print put SLD Magic over here, right? That's, that's fine. I like the look of a Sanmai blade. Uh, I think that's just with the core peeking out. I think that just looks really nice. As far as I know, SLD Magic is stainless. But if it ends up actually being similar in composition to D2, it's just got some magic this or that, maybe more vanadium or whatever. And maybe it's powder forms. Maybe it has just enough of that cake mix to where people will label it as a super steel. I don't know. If it is actually like D2, that means that it's not actually stainless. It's very, very close. But I, I don't know because I don't know the composition. I have to assume that it is. Uh, but maybe it isn't, right? That's that's just one of those things where we don't – I don't have the – I can't just be like – I can't take a magnifying glass and go, ah, there's – a lot of chromium and not very much carbon. Like I can't, <laughs> I can't do that, right? So I don't know. Um, I'm sure that we'll find out soon, though. It's it's nice that we have so many different you know types of channels in this community and different people with the ability to do that. So, anyways, the blade is very much user oriented, and the overall fit and finish, the the sharpening job, uh, everything, everything is great. Um, it's it's really really a nice knife, and that's what I expect from Max Ace. There's a little lanyard loop down here. There is some milling on the inside of the titanium for weight reduction, which is nice. No option for lefty carry, which I think is really silly. You literally just needed one more screw hole over here and you would have been, well, it's not, a, the clip is, is curved, right? So that wouldn't have been the case, but 
a symmetrical clip would have been ideal in another spot over here so that lefties could enjoy it because truthfully, this is very nearly an identical experience uh, for left-handed people. So that would have been great if you're lefty, but I guess not. There is a steel lock bar insert, uh, believe it or not, on this new titanium version. Um, like I said, the old ones apparently were steel liners. So that's kind of cool. We have a stop pin back here, a big fat stop pin with plenty of shouldering. As is the case with every Max Ace I've ever handled, there's no blade play up, down, left, or right. There is no lock stick, no double clutch, no pivot lash. Very smooth in here. Detent is nice, it's medium, and we have perfect centering with no detent lash. If you like big knives, uh, to me, this is a no-brainer. I mean, this is the most tempted I have ever been to carry a knife of this size. Um, generally my cutoff is like right at nine inches. I'm like, nah, that's just too big. I don't care how convenient it is, but the, there is so much blade, uh, and it is ground so well. I mean, this really does just eat materials like cardboard. No problem. It's just, you know, more proof that geometry really is. Those are the fangs on the beast, man. You can have the big wings. It could be breathing fire, right? But the teeth on the thing. The stuff that's doing the actual work, right, at the end of the day. God dang. Uh, it's a performer. Um, really nice, really high quality. For 130 bucks, if that's actually accurate. I looked. The problem is, is on Max Ace's website, it doesn't actually say that the Sanmai SLD Magic version is titanium in the liners. But I can find evidence of this other places on the internet, and I cannot find a version of online that says SLD Magic San Mai and that that is not uh, titanium or that is a steel liner lock and this is definitely not a steel liner lock otherwise there would be no version for the or no reason for the the lock bar insert this the bolster's got to be titanium right uh the reason the only reason it's believable is because Max Ace made the Max the the, the black mirror and had an excellent price tag on that thing so i believe it right um I don't know how costly a, uh, a SLD Magic is to produce, and I honestly don't know who makes it. Um, that That's a mystery, to me at least, at this moment. So I don't know. Um, as soon as I know something about it, I will make sure everybody knows. But as, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't really matter what version of this new Goliath that you get if you like big knives. Obviously, this knife is going to be way too gigantic for a lot of people. If you don't like big knives, this obviously isn't going to be for you. But if you like big knives, holy crap. This is amazing. This is such a cool knife. Um, and for 130 bucks, I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. I mean, hey, you want the exotic version? Carbon fiber, a Damascus bolster, titanium liners, and S90V. And by the way, they're showing that their S90V is heat treated from 60 to 62. Honestly, 62 is a bit high for S90V. So I have to assume that that's a mega performer. Uh, yeah, sure. Go for it. If you like big knives, I'll recommend this as to somebody who is a big knife person. As it's it, so I obviously can't recommend this to everybody. The fact that it's so huge just makes it by default not a knife that everybody's going to enjoy, right? Or that I can recommend everybody. But very cool stuff. Max Ace keeping it real with the price tag. Wow, that made me sound super lame. <sighs> Thanks for supporting my channel anyway. Uh, thanks to Max Ace for sending this in. Like I said, I'll have links for this guy right down below. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. That's the old card. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.